Hi everybody, welcome back to Handmade with me, Karen, for the very last time. Yes, it's true, this is my final video here on Handmade. I have loved working on this channel. I have made hundreds of videos, you know, hundreds of different craft projects, but it's time to move on to other projects. So today I thought I would make a collage and talk about my best memories from Handmade over the years. So how did I get involved with HGTV in the first place? So at the end of 2012, I had actually just left a full-time job. So in 2013, HGTV got in touch with me saying that they were starting their own like DIY YouTube channel and they wanted to know if I wanted to be a part of it. It was actually perfect timing because I needed something a little more stable than just doing my own channel, but I realized that I hated working in offices, so I really didn't want to go back to like a regular full-time job, so working for HGTV was actually the most perfect opportunity that could have come my way. You know, I got to work from home doing what I was already doing, making craft videos, but in a slightly more um, stable structure. So a little fun fact, we actually had our first meeting at VidCon. <laughs> And I remember afterwards, I was so excited about it that there was another party that I was supposed to go to that night. And instead I just like met up with some friends and completely forgot about this other event that was happening. And I just completely missed it because I was so excited that I was gonna be working with HGTV. So initially, way back at the beginning, the channel was me, and Julia, Marianne, and Meg. Marianne was already working for HGTV, but the rest of us um, flew to Knoxville for a few days. And we all collaboratively came up with the name for Handmade. You know, we were all so involved in basically coming up with the structure and you know, what we wanted this channel to be. When you work with big companies, it doesn't always work out like that. So I just feel like I was so lucky to work with HGTV and for them to really listen to our input and, you know, really make it our channel. So during that first trip where we all got together, we also shot sort of like a commercial for the channel where we were in this loft and we ended up putting up this photo background with all of these uh, circles. And would you look at what I happen to still have? <laughs> the reason I ended up with these is because for my first solo video, I decided to sort of recreate that project at home. So I took these home with me. I've cut some of them up throughout the years for various craft projects. But now you know, um, I'm such a hoarder. I like don't throw any craft supplies out. <laughs> I can't believe I still have these. <laughs> Next, I thought that I would talk about some of my favorite projects that I've made over the years because I have made literally hundreds of projects here on this channel. Admittedly, some more successful than others. So of course, I have to start off by mentioning my cardboard fireplace. I made that three years ago and it is still going strong. I actually have it set up right now in the other room. It does have a little bit of a dent in the side because I store it in the shared garage of my apartment building when it's not Christmas time. And I think that at some point this past year, 
a car might have driven into it. But even with being hit by a car, it still looks great. I remember I got a few comments when I first made it saying that it was over engineered, but I think it was engineered the perfect amount. The foosball table was also really fun and this actually ended up doing really well on Facebook. So fun fact about this project, um, in the final shots where you see two people playing it, that's actually my old roommate and his friend who had just happened to have been visiting from Norway when I was making that video. And so just because he happened to be in town, now his hands have been seen on Facebook 20 million times. <laughs> the Perler Bead Wind Spinner is also one that did really well on Facebook. I think it's up to like 18 million views, which is so wild. I mean, it's a pretty simple project, but I guess people just really responded to it for some reason. And I also still really like the geodesic dome bowl that I made a few years ago. It didn't get a ton of views, but I think it was really creative and it came out really well, especially for using such inexpensive materials. So I actually still use that one too. I have it in my bathroom right now holding a plant. I also still have the telephone planter out on display um, that I think was really successful, really cute. And I also still use my farmhouse pumpkin, which I think came out really well. And then this is kind of a random one. This is a really old project, but way back in probably the first year of this channel. I made this mason jar pin cushion and I still use it all the time for like every single sewing project that I do. It was just a really practical project that has just held up really well. So now, why don't we talk about my worst projects? Not every project is going to be a winner, and I've definitely had a few uh, fails throughout the years. So probably one of, if not the worst, was the holographic chalkboard. So I had gotten this clear chalkboard spray paint where theoretically, you know, you could spray it on anything you want and that item then becomes a chalkboard. So I had the idea to spray it onto a piece of holographic scrapbook paper and glue it to this wooden backing to make sort of like a front door organizer, which isn't necessarily a bad idea, but it just wasn't styled very well. It didn't work very well. So I think that one was definitely a fail. <laughs> Pretty early in the channel, I also made these coffee stirrer bracelets and the one with the really short ends kind of sticking um, up and down vertically is probably one of the ugliest things I've ever seen in my life. I don't know what I was thinking. Actually, I knew what I was thinking. I knew that I needed an extra project to sort of fill out the video, and that's what I came up with. But <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think that one worked very well. So the next one was pretty recent, um, just sometime in the last few years. I made these uh, summertime desk organizers and I think the idea is solid. I think if you maybe 3D printed them, it would look really cool, but making them out of cardboard and hot glue, it just looked really messy. Oh, this next one is similar to the chalkboard. Um, I made these dry erase ornaments. Again, I had gotten dry erase spray paint and I was like, obsessed with this stuff. So I had the idea to spray it on a large Christmas ornament so you could draw whatever design you want. But the problem is that I am not an illustrator, so the design that I ended up drawing 
just looked really ugly and messy. <laughs> I don't think that one worked very well. And then finally, um, the donut shoes from the white shoe challenge that we did a while back. There are lots of people who have done donut shoes really well. I don't think that I was one of them. Part of the problem is that I had all of these beads that I was going to sew on to look like sprinkles, but I couldn't get the needle through the fabric of the shoe. And also once you get up to the toe, it's really tight up there, so I couldn't sew them on. So I ended up having to glue them on instead, which took forever. I remember sitting in the bathroom with a hairdryer trying to get the glue to dry before the beads like fell off the side of the shoe. It would have been totally impractical to actually wear these. And I just don't think they turned out so well. So in addition to obviously making all the videos, um, throughout my time with HGTV, we also did a lot of different shoots, um, some different events. We had the big Tiki party shoot back in 2015. Then in 2016, we did the dorm takeover series where we completely made over two dorm rooms. We packed so many projects into like, three or four days of shooting. Our final shoot together was the Christmas shoot back in October of 2019. And that's the last time that I saw everyone in person because we were supposed to have like a summer camp themed shoot in the summer of 2020, but for obvious reasons, uh, that did not happen. Also for a while, HGTV was going to VidCon and one year we sponsored the entire meet and greet hall. So we had these huge, huge posters of all of our faces. It was so surreal seeing that. Um, what I really wanted was to take mine home and use it as a shower curtain to freak out my roommate, but unfortunately they did not let us take them home, so I have no idea what happened to all of those posters. Speaking of VidCon, did you know that one year David Bromstad was at VidCon? It was really funny because out on the main floor, you know, all of the teenagers were really excited about all of the YouTubers that they watch. And then over at our booth, all of their moms were really excited to meet David Bromstad. <laughs> I was such a fangirl when I met him because I've been watching him on TV since his very first season of Design Star back in 2006. So getting to meet him and even film some videos with him was so great and he was so nice. Also one year, the Property Brothers were at VidCon as well. Drew Scott was there as well as JD Scott and Drew's wife, Linda. We got to film some videos together and again, they were super nice. It was so fun meeting them. A while back, we also did this New Year's series in collaboration with one of the like dream homes that they were giving away. But because of that, I shot a video with Mr. Kate here at my apartment. I had already known Kate like through the DIY community, so getting to film together was really fun. And I am just obsessed with everything she's doing now. I am so impressed with how she's pivoted to like interior design content. And I just eat up every single one of her videos. And then of course, meeting and working with all of my fellow crafters here on the channel. I feel so lucky to have been welcomed into such a nice and supportive community. Whether it's crafters who came on just for a few videos or like Marianne, who again has been here just as long as I have. Once I go, she's gonna be the only one left of the original five. <laughs> Oh.
Aw, look how fun my little collage turned out. I can't believe that's the last craft that I'm going to do on camera. So you might be wondering, what is next for me? Well, don't worry, I'm still going to be on YouTube. If you didn't know, I also have a channel called Karen Puzzles, where I solve and review the most interesting jigsaw puzzles that I can find. So I'm going to be doing that full time next year, and I'll also, of course, still be on Instagram. Over on Instagram, I'm sure that I will continue to post photos of the different craft projects that I'm doing, but I'm going to let crafting become a hobby again rather than a job. You know, it's really hard work consistently coming up with new projects and new ideas, breaking them down into a different steps so that you can teach it to someone else, and then filming and editing the whole thing. So I'm just really excited to just make what I want whenever I want and not have to worry about filming it. So I want to say a big thank you to everyone at HGTV for having me on the channel. They've been so great to work with and this channel has been a constant in my life for the past eight years. And I'm really gonna miss the team and our community but I'm just really excited to see what other projects everybody else comes up with next and just continue to be inspired by them. So thank you for watching and for the final time, keep on crafting.